All right, all right, all right, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the greatest show of all time right here on 77 WABC Radio. Where is it? In New York City. That's yeah. right. And if you are an author, a speaker, a coach, an expert or entrepreneur of any kind, then yeah, this is the show for you because this whole endeavor is dedicated to helping you be seen, be heard, and be wanted so that you can have the impact, influence, and income that you desire and lust after. Are you lusting after more impact, influence, and income? <laughs> I know I am constantly lusting after it. And in order to help you, I wanted to bring in a very special friend of mine. I have been working with her for a couple of years now. I first saw her speak at, was it the Harvard Faculty Club? Yes. Yes, at yes. the Harvard Faculty Club with Suzanne Summers a few years ago. Yes. And ever since then, I have been in love with my, my darling friend, Dr. Yvonne Mayweather. Dr. Mayweather, thank you so much for being with me on The Greatest Show of All Time. Well, you know, this is an absolute pleasure. I love doing your shows. All right, yeah. We had you on a couple of months ago, and I said, I want more of Dr. Mayweather. I want to really go in deep because there's so much that my audience can learn from Dr. Mayweather. So why don't you tell us about your personal journey? Because I know you have a very personal oh. journey to share with a lot of people that will mean a lot to a lot of people. You know, I do. Um, and it's there's a lot of peaks and valleys in it. Um, but you know, my initial uh, presentation, uh, talk or story started really when I was uh, working as an emergency medicine doctor. Um, you know, I think when you're young, you kind of think you'll be invincible forever. And um, so had I used to work many, many shifts because I had uh, a lot of student loans. And you know what? I just didn't take care of myself like I should have. Um, and um, it got to a point where I started to notice that my brain was starting to, um, the processing was starting to slow. Like when I'd be in the emergency department and I'm supposed to think of a drug, like, quick, it wasn't coming. And I um, really panicked uh, because of course I can't work in that capacity. So I um, also was fatigued. There were some other symptoms, but those were the two main ones. And, um, you know, did a workup, a traditional medicine workup and all my labs, everything were fine. And, um, but like I said, I was desperate. So I actually reached out to a uh, anti-aging slash like age management doctor. And he happened to be an old ER doctor, so we clicked. And um, he said he went through the same thing I did. And um, we did a workup with him and that included hormones and something that I wasn't familiar with, uh, not these hormones not in this capacity, and found out that I basically had the hormone profile of someone, it's embarrassing, but like 25 years older than me. Um, and basically the stress was doing that to me. Um, so when I started to do some uh, stress management and started replacing my hormones and getting them optimized and balanced, oh my goodness, it made all the difference in the world in terms of like my brain was much sharper and my fatigue, I mean, I actually got my vitality back. And I was, I said to myself, I said to myself, this is what people are looking for. They're not looking to age like their parents and grandparents did. They're looking to stay vital and, and uh, with a, a great quality of life, optimal quality of life until they die. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to start practicing this, uh, this, new, this new field, anti-aging medicine. Um, 
And I essentially started to practice it. And um, at the time I uh, was diagnosed with, uh, basically it's called adrenal dysfunction. Something that um, traditional medicine doesn't recognize. They recognize when your cortisol is too high, way too high, or really, really low, but nothing in between. And, and that's where I was. So um, to move the story along, you know, I started, you know, I got certified and started practicing, worked for a great company, um, or great, I should say great, um, well, the world's largest age, uh, anti-aging medical group in the world. Um, started getting great experience, and uh, it ended up that something that basically happened 10 years prior when I was feeling ill popped up, and it was breast cancer. And it was early. I caught it early, and it was non-aggressive. But, um, and we thought we had it. You know, I threw everything at it at that time. But um, it reappeared. And what I found um, in, um, you know, learning anti-aging medicine and also um, learning and cer being certified uh, in something, a new um, field called functional medicine, mm -hmm. um, it may those two uh, fields basically were going to save my life. And the reason why is because those, basic, those two fields, they look to try to optimize a person's health and really try to prevent illness and, and look for the root cause of illness. And so, and that's not something that traditional medicine really, that's not what we really do. We are very, very good at crisis medicine. Very, very good at that. We're the best, actually. Um, but I, I needed something more. And one part of my life that I really, truly wasn't taking care of, and that was my stress management. Um, I believe that there's five pillars to, um, to have a healthy, optimal lifestyle, and that is... Uh, detoxification, that's uh, nutrition, uh, optimal nutrition, clearly, um, fitness, hormone balance, and stress management. And that stress management was where I was really failing. Um, I did some, but not where, what I needed to do. I was starting to eliminate stress, but I actually wasn't taking care of my inner well-being. And so that was the difference in my health that I needed to tackle. And actually, what I actually saw was that my health truly improved when I actually started to uh, treat my, uh, how do you say it? really treat my nervous system, um, start to really deal with my inner well-being. That's really when I started to, my health started to improve. And actually I went into remission because actually the cancer went from early uh, form to metastatic. And when it was metastatic, when I, that's when I incorporated the, uh, the meditation and uh yeah it, and it made a difference and okay, so let's, let's talk about five let's talk about like your five best tips to to uh deal with stress yes you said you said there was two elements stress reduction and inner well-being so yes. i'd love for you to share with the audience your five best tips on reducing stress and then i want you to go into the five best tips on inner well-being okay you know, getting rid, well, first and foremost, you got to get rid of as much stress as you can. I mean, obviously we can't get rid of all of it, but like chronic relations, you know, these bad relationships that we, you know, that kind of linger in, in our life that um, 
are, are, are uh, maybe even in the back of our mind bothering us. We, we need to eliminate that. We need to not, for instance, like um, watch things like the news all the time that put us in a, a negative uh, uh, vibration. Okay, what? those are two separate ones, right? Chronic yes. relationships and, and inputs, like uh, information inputs that put you in a bad mood. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, actually what to me is really key is we are responsible for our vibration, how we feel, whether we're gonna be happy or, or sad. And if we start to think that, and control, you know, control our, uh, our vibration, it does absolutely affect your inner well-being and which affects your, uh, your, um, your uh, I'm, I'm thinking your immune system. Yep. And, and, and many, uh, your health in, in general. So that's super important. There's, now, I'm talking about things that you need to, to do, but one particularly, so that was three. Um, we need to also start nourishing our inner well-being. Wait, 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 oh. wait. I, I, wait, 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 wait. Yes. I, I don't want to let you skate out of this. I want to go back to eliminating toxic relationships. Give me yes. an example of a toxic relationship that you eliminated. And I want you to be honest, and maybe you don't talk about this a lot, but... Who's one of the people that got eliminated? A huge one, I would say, is, um, I'm, I'm going to actually lump it. I actually retired from the emergency department. That was a huge, um, a huge stressor that I, I truly couldn't control. Um, I, I had so to work eliminate stress. that. Right? That's a work stress. You had to eliminate yes, that is. work stress. Okay, yes. good. All right. Now, let's talk about, so are you telling people that they should cut out certain people from their life? Yes, absolutely. Okay, what absolutely. about if that's your mother? You know, you have to, obviously, a lot of times you can't cut out your mother, but you know what? You're going to have to limit it. It's important to limit it. The most important thing for you should be your health and well-being. And if that relationship is uh -huh. toxic to you, then it's going to affect your health. And we see it, and I've lived it. So, um, you know, hopefully uh, that relationship maybe could be worked on, you know, could be improved. But if not, it needs to, uh, you need to cut it to a, a minimum if it's making you Okay, so we got... Sick. Controlling people who are in yes. your life who are giving you stress. Controlling yes. work that is in yes. your life that's giving you stress. Absolutely. Controlling information in your life, such Absolutely. as news or other media, that could be giving you stress. What's number four? What's number four? Um, you know, I don't know if I can give you five. I know that those are the big ones. Those are, those are three good ones. Or three, one yeah, three, three, three huge ones. Um, the, but I think actually what's also is as important, and you asked me to give five of them, is how you nourish your inner well-being. Because oftentimes, you know, you can eliminate some negative stressors, but if you don't start nourishing this, this part of yourself that we're not really taught to, to do, we weren't taught this in uh, medical school, to nourish our inner well-beings, to... Uh, what meditation does, how it affects your nervous system, your brain and, your, and, and other parts of your nervous system. How, when you do that, you start to, your nervous system starts to deal with stress so much better than before. And how it boosts your immune system. You know, um, there is a, um, there is a, a, a cell biologist, uh, his name is Dr. Lipton. He was able to prove that the, one of the biggest triggers that turns on bad genes is stress. More so than let's say you smoking or like other toxins that we know turn on bad genes. 
stress, emotional stress, does it? I'm so, telling you, that's one of the reasons why Ali and I, I want to move down here to Acapulco, because I, I believe yes. that yes. we reduce stress by living in Acapulco mm -hmm. half the year. We mm -hmm. would probably add a decade to our lifespans. What do you think? Oh, I, I agree, and it may be more. I mean, because obviously, you know what? We there's no reason why most of us shouldn't be living to we're a hundred or, or or more. Particularly if you know, yeah. you've seen that your your family, you have that history. But that's what we have to do. We have to start thinking about eliminating the stressors and treating our bodies like temples and nourishing. Our, our inner well beings and, and our, and really, this is an easy way of putting it. Putting your health first before anything else. Yes. Amen to that. All right, we yes. got some good stressors people, yes. information, and jobs. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, then you talked about inner well being. Give yes. us some more ideas about inner well being and what we can do to nourish our own inner well being. Yes. So, you know, you're, your inner well-being is like your feelings and, you, and your intuition. And you can nourish that. And a, a way of doing that is, and actually it's even a connection, your inner connection with, with God. Um, and so there's many different ways that you can nourish that. You can do... Um, different types of meditation. Like for instance, um, we know of mindful meditation. Um, you know what, even listening to music, um, exercise is, is a good stress reliever. That helps. Yoga or other t forms of uh, meditation, like there's one Tai Chi or something called Qigong. Um, all of those there are a lot of different types of uh, meditation practices and all of them do something different in terms of tuning up your nervous system to stress and making okay. it much, much healthier. Okay, meditation is a good form of inner well-being, right? Absolutely, oh, yeah, <laughs> tuning up, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you also mentioned a relationship with God or yes. spirituality, right? That's a second way to tune up your inner well-being. What's a good third way to tune up your inner well-being? Um, well, what I like to do, um, I'm, and I, like I said, one is like yoga or um, different uh, types of movements like, uh, like uh, Tibetans do or, or like the Chinese, what they're well known uh, for doing. Um, so that would be, could we put those into like meditative exercises? Is that a good, abso a absolutely. good description of absolutely. it? Absolutely. And me, I walk a lot, but I talk a lot when I'm on the phone. And, you know, I was thinking the other day, I call, I like to call people that I like. And I was thinking the other day, mm -hmm. I don't just call people that I like. I only call people that I like. It's really interesting. I'm very blessed. Oh, well, that's great. I'm mm -hmm. very blessed that I really <laughs> only talk to people that I really like. It's, it's a wonderful thing. All right. So we got, uh, we got meditation. We got, mm -hmm. we got, um, we got spirituality. Yes. We've got meditative exercise such as yoga, yeah. swimming, walking, Qigong, et cetera. Oh, Qigong. That's, yes. that's three ways. Is there an, is there a fourth way to work on inner well being? Gosh, there's things such as alpha meditations. I mean, you know what? I'm, I'm very much into a lot of different meditations. Um, and the reason why I, I mention alpha meditations, these are meditations that you just use in five minutes. And actually, it's something that Steve Jobs used to, to do for himself. He used to do five times a day. Oh, tell um, us all about this, please. Go right oh, yeah. into it. So essentially what you do, these alpha meditations, you, you stop and you, you, you make yourself go into a quiet space where you're able to visualize 
maybe yourself in, in, in a very nice, comfortable place, you know, in your mind. And with certain types of, um, uh, like, like particular alpha meditation, it helps you focus, get clearer and focus on either being creative or what you should be doing next. That's actually what I hear, what I read. Um, Steve Jobs used to do five times a day, which helped him focus, as opposed to oftentimes uh, what I used to do is I used to get up in the morning and I used to do like maybe an hour's worth of, of meditation, different meditations, like breathing exercise. I'm sorry, I had forgotten about uh, another one, but good. breathing That's exercises good. are super. Inner well-being, breathing yes. well, right. So you're uh, saying Steve Jobs with these alpha meditations, he yeah. would just sit there for five minutes and focus on what his next task was going to be? Yes, or what, what he needed to do. Because, you know, oftentimes, because tell me if, if you can relate to this, and I'm sure a lot of people can. Um, let's say you start your day and you're busy and, you know, there's distractions. And sometimes you can get, uh, un, you can lose your focus. And when you stop and you meditate for like a few minutes, you get your focus back and it oftentimes will tell you where you need to be going for the next few hours. And so actually I've been using that and it's helped me to really stay on like my time schedule because I'm one actually I like to be, if I, if I don't do this, I find myself, um, I can get distracted really easy, sure. um, but it helps you stay on point. Now, in your study of Steve Jobs and his alpha meditation habit or mm -hmm. practice, yes. uh, what, was, what was one of the products that this alpha meditation process was used while he was developing it? Do you know? Well, I, I do know that, um, you know, like when he was fired from um, Apple, Apple. Mm -hmm. that um, I'm, I'm, I'm certain that he probably, that's what helped him develop Pixar. Um, yeah. So... I love that. I love that. Now I yes. want to offer. I want to go back to this inner well-being, and I want to offer. Yes. A, I want to offer a suggestion or ask you a question. What about Jeez. slow food movement? How, do you know about the slow food movement? And do you think that slow might food? be considered? Yeah, slow food. That I. You know what? I'm not. I've never heard of that slow okay, food. Slow Tell food, me about that. Slow food comes from places like Italy, where <laughs> it's the opposite of fast food. Slow food philosophy is food should be enjoyed. Food should be ritualized. Food is part of life. It's not something that you do just to get it done and over with. You do it because it's part of life. So a slow food experience would be to take a two hour lunch in, you know, in the middle of a hot day and just enjoy a nice meal lovingly prepared with great ingredients and perhaps some wine or mm -hmm. sparkling water. Yes. A bit like the old way they used to eat in the, in the old yeah. country when before we came here from the old country. <laughs> but that's what slow food really is. What do you right. think about that? That part of inner well-being? Yes. You know what? Ideally, that would be like perfect. I mean, because, you know, one of the things that affects you the most is what you put in your mouth. And if you're in this environment where it's loving and, and it's maybe social, maybe you're socializing with friends or somebody and uh, you're enjoying good, healthy, for instance, like organic food, that's great and, and wonderful and, and absolutely should add to your life. Um, I wish I could take two hours, that would be great. Um, it'd probably have to be, you know, much less, but the concept, I'm all for. I'm all for anything that's gonna keep your vibration up. I'll tell you, Ali and I have been really enjoying our extended stay in Acapulco. And we're start, mm -hmm. we start off every day, I don't know if we quite go two hours, but we could probably go mm -hmm. an hour and a half breakfast. And yeah. really all it is, is- That's uh, nice. She has some papaya with cottage cheese. I have yes. pineapple. And yeah. then we have uh, a scrambled egg, mm -hmm. one scrambled egg between the two of us. 
with yes. vegetables and perhaps some salami in there. Mm -hmm. And then we drink coffee and we drink celery juice mm -hmm. and we play backgammon. And we just that's take beautiful. I mean, that's chill. that's wonderful. And you know, so how so long? Like an hour and a half. That's that's that is so ideal, and I am so jealous. <laughs> I am so jealous. But that's but that's that's like perfect. I mean, that's what life really should be about. I mean, we really truly need to slow down. But our culture, our American culture, um, is truly killing us. And we have to try to slow, uh, reverse some of these, these pressures that we are feeling. Because, you know, I don't care what um, walk of life you're in. We're all feeling it. I mean, it's always push, push, push. You know, whether you're, you know, um, you know, an entrepreneur, whether you work for somebody, you know, whether you're, it, it doesn't matter. We all feel it. That's just like the American way. And that kind of pressure, um, steady pressure, is killing us. It, yeah. it is really killing us. Yeah, that's stress. Now, yeah. I got to talk about something that's really an obvious thing we got to talk about. And that is your skin, my dear. Your beautiful, oh. wrinkle-free, just blemish-free skin. You look so beautiful and youthful and Thank not you. stressed and healthy. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your personal beauty regime that enables you to have the face that you have. How do you do that? Uh, first one, I should say, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate that I, I do have a good, I have great genes. And uh, I am- I hoping you weren't gonna say that. <laughs> but no, but you know what? But, but you know what, um, you know, I'm sure you've heard of this. Um, black doesn't crack. Now, that is so false. <laughs> we just don't show the aging as fast. But what I'd say first and foremost, uh, uh, in, in terms of why my skin looks like it, it does, and I, and I will tell you my age, I, in a month, I'm gonna be 55. Whoa! So, I yes. have no idea. I, I would. Yes. I have no idea. And very proud of it. Very proud. Amen. Of it. Yes. Yes. So You're 1965. I'm 1965. I'm going to yes. be, I'm gonna July be 55 when I'm 28. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. So um, plenty of water. I, I drink a lot of, uh, a lot of water, filtered water. Um, I eat as much organic as I can. Um, uh, lots of um, oils. Um, I, I, I take a lot of different uh, oils. Um, like, what I, do you mean I, by that? So, I, I mean, in terms of like omega threes, like your 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 fish oil. Um, I I invest a lot in uh, oils. Um, you know, I do take a, a lot of supplements um, because. I know um, because of the uh, work I do and the testing that I do, it matters whether your body is running like okay, the way a lot of most people's uh, bodies are running and it's running optimally. You will start to look and feel the difference. And what I always hear from um, people that have known me for uh, like years, decades, you don't seem to be aging. Now, you would think that you would see my aging if I worked for 20 years in, in an inner city uh, emergency uh, department and I had cancer and had other you know, issues that had, had come up. But it's truly because of how I take care of myself and that's particularly what I eat, um, exercise, really detoxifying, um, because that's an issue that, that is just that we have to do today because we're just bombarded by so many pollutants. Um, and um, gosh, plenty of uh, fruits and vegetables. Um, like I said, uh, I, do, I am not a vegetarian. I do eat meat, um, but I do only eat or organic meat. 
Um, okay, what are the three most important oils that you're personally investing and ingesting? Omega-3, so that's yes, like fish I, oils, right? Yeah, I take fish oil. I also take um, GLA. GLA? Yeah. Um, and I also take um, uh, condolytic uh, linolytic acid, uh, condulic, uh, conjugated linolytic acid, CLA. I take, I take extra, and particularly that one is from um, beef, um, and it's in dairy, but it so, has much higher levels of it in organic uh, food. And so, um, but that's anti-cancer, and um, you know, it helps you um, lose weight, so. All right, all right, folks, you can see she's got all kinds of secrets, okay? You can see that she's got all kinds got of secrets. a lot of stuff. Right? Oh, thank you. <laughs> that you bring those secrets to bear on your patients. How can people find out more about having you help them to not just look great, but also age slower or reverse the aging process yes. and be healthy despite challenges that they may be facing in their lives? How can people find out more about you, Dr. Mayweather? Well, you know what? I would love them to call, you know, my office. Um, my, um, let me tell you my, um, my office number, it's uh, area code 424-247-4753. And the website? Yes, is www.restorebrainbody.com. Restore or they can look brain up, body. Yes. Brain, Restorebrainbody.com. Or actually, they can look up my practice, my wellness practice, which is the Brain and Body Restoration Institute. And that's okay. in Southern California. Storebrainbody.com or call her up on the phone and make it happen. Yes. Dr. Mayweather, Dr. Yvonne Mayweather has been my yes. guest today on the greatest show of all time. Thank you so much for sharing fun. your stories and yes. your life and your experiences with the audience. And tune in every Sunday night, 9.30 p.m. on 77 WABC Radio for the greatest show of all time. Good night, everybody. Thank you.